Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dad's Den of Pop Culture, Alpha Flight Monday, Alpha Flight number 33, cover date of April 1986. So you notice Mignola 1985, the signature here, the cover date and when these were actually released are always different. And in this issue, we had a little guest starring here by -na 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 -na, the X-Men. And this is the period when... Magneto had taken charge of the X-Men for Professor X, who was off with um, Lelandra, his Shire lover, in another galaxy, um, which, you know, it's comic book, so that makes perfect sense. We got Phoenix, the daughter of Scott Summers and Jean Grey. We got Rogue back here, Storm Nightcrawler. Colossus, Wolverine, of course. We see Alpha Flight in the background. Is that Shadow Cat? It might not be Shadow Cat. We'll, we'll see when we get it. And, of course, laying in the foreground, Heather Hudson in her Guardian, now Vindicator, battle armor, who apparently has been killed by the X-Men. That wasn't very nice. So, from Bill Matlow, writer, Sal Buscema, penciler, Jerry Taliak, inker, Jim Novak, letterer. And I believe I saw a note. It was actually Janice uh, Chang who did the lettering, not Jim Novak. Uh, Bob Sharon, colorist, Carl Potts, editor, Jim Shooter, editor-in-chief. Novak has done the lettering for most of these, so I'm sure it was just an oversight. They forgot to change the name. On the scroll. A friend in need. A sonic boom shatters the sky as Guardian, we call her Guardian? Guardian? Oh, yeah, there's a Guardian down there with a question mark. As Guardian sweeps southward over central Quebec. Or, if you're a true American, Quebec. Because we just pronounce things however we damn well like. Um, the passage of Canada's champion does not go unnoticed by those laboring in the fields below. Look, it's Guardian. Guardian? But Guardian's dead. Yes. The original Guardian, James MacDonald Hudson, originator of Alpha Flight, died in combat. Alpha Flight number 12. Which you can find reviewed on this channel, of course, if you look at the playlist. That'll show pop up at the end of this video. As far as anyone knew, the secret of his incredible battle suit died with him. Then, a killer robot managed to mimic the suit's power until the Dark Guardian was terminated in turn, but this time the suit's secret survived. That was in Alpha Flight number 29. To be fashioned into a costume that was donned by Heather McNeil Hudson, Guardian's wife. So last issue, we got the first appearance of Heather Hudson as Vindicator. Now, if you know the lore of Alpha Flight, Guardian was the original name that John Byrne wanted for the character. But when they were going to start the Alpha Flight series, I believe they had Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, this is not the same Guardians of the Galaxy people have gotten to know from the MCU, the earlier version of it. They were being published, and they didn't want the confusion. So he, for at least a couple, three issues, he was called Vindicator. Apparently that series went away. He got to be Guardian for a while. With Heather Hudson taking up, she's going to be called Vindicator as well, I think, to differentiate the two characters, because despite the same costume, despite they were husband and wife, they are very different characters. In fact, whoops. And so... Heather is going off to try to get some better combat training. Puck didn't want to do it because he cares about her and she, he's afraid that she's going to be hurt. So she's going to seek out an old friend who's pretty good at all that fighting business. And as she's streaking along, underwater is Marina. Looking monstrous, not looking like Marina did back when she was a member of Alpha Flight. And that was an early arc of stories in the book. She is an alien. 
from a species that colonizes worlds by dropping eggs on them. And the eggs then take on the genetic form of something from that planet, at least slightly, and they spread and they conquer. And she became the love of Namor, the Submariner. And basically, uh, it all went bad. She has this monstrous side, and they all believe she was killed. She's dead. One person knows she is not, and that is Puck. Puck saw that she was still alive, promised to keep her secret, but apparently Atuma of Atlantis is also aware and is trying to capture her for his own evil purposes. And here we see, so speaks Atuma, Lord of Atlantis. That's that's just good old-fashioned, Kirby-esque, Marvel House-style drawing right there. Nice job, Sal. Love that stuff. I love all. I love a lot of styles of drawing, but that's when you're getting into Marvel. Every once in a while, it just needs to look Kirby-esque. You know, it just has to have that look. So she dives super deep to try to avoid them, which hurts her quite severely. And she's suffering, but she's suffering pains of, of more than just more than just that. And elsewhere, Snowbird feels those pains as well. Marinus screams, find its oh, yeah, to say screams, finds its echo thousands of miles away on an RCMP base in the McKinsey District, Northwest Territory, Canada. For heaven's sake, Doc, help her. And so this doctor's kind of like, dude, um, she's kind of a goddess, and I'm sort of just a normal doctor. I don't know really what I'm doing. And as he's trying to help her, she kind of suddenly, you know, gets her, her evil sort of goddess face going, insufferable mortals, how dare you attempt to stay the rage of a deity? For that you shall die. And then she thankfully taking several forms along the way, passes out. Thompson, what did we just see? Her true fires, she calls it, Doc. She's out, but I have a feeling she won't be for long. Given the situation, the phone rings, unheeded. But who could be on that phone? Do you think it's just a waste? It's not really anybody important? Of course not. No answer, troops. Maybe it's Goddess's day off. Tamarind Island, a safe harbor sheltered on the Straits of San Juan de Fuca, off the coast of British Columbia. It is host to a single Gothic structure, which happens to be the mansion headquarters of Alpha Flight. And it occurs to me that they are a second Marvel superhero team on the North American West Coast, along with the West Coast Avengers, recollecting some of the ones I had when I was a kid. Big fan of the West Coast Avengers back in the day. Big fan. One of them, my first favorite comic books. So, um, I believe that's Mr. Jeffries is trying to get a hold of Snowbird. They're trying to figure out what's happened to Heather. Puck is blaming himself because he wouldn't train her. Um, great art. Sammy Sim was, he was solid. He really was solid. I take it, Jeffries, <clears throat> that you're advising us to help Heather help herself to do that. We have to find, but to do that, we have to find her. Luckily, having rebuilt Guardian's battle suit, I can also locate it anywhere in the world. Let me go, Puck. I don't need your fancy instruments to track Heather Box. I just figured out where she's gone. And I've got to reach her if I'm going to say I'm sorry in time to win her back from the one hero able and willing to give her the combat training I denied her and offer her the love of a lousy little dwarf. So and you keep in mind, you're going, man, he's like, you know, you're, this 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 little person really seems to hate little people. Well, Judd is not actually a little person. He is, in fact, a quite tall person who has this small stature because he basically holds the this demonic, well, sort of demonic sorceress entity inside his body. That's what shrunk him down. Um, so he's, you know... 
kind of crappy what he says about himself. But I mean, this is really mostly about his own insecurities and his own feelings of worthlessness. Um, and you know, those can be intensified when one is in love with somebody and they don't feel they're worthy of that person's love. And I think a lot of us have been there at some point in our life. So meanwhile, Heather streaks southward towards uh, Westchester, New York. Was it Westchester? Or, well, I think it's, but anyways. And she's going to see Logan. She's going to go see Wolverine because Wolverine is quite the warrior, trained a lot of the X-Men how to fight. Now, Magneto sees her incoming and assumes that they're under attack. And while Wolverine is yelling, no, don't do nothing, and we get him in his cowboy hat with the bolo tie there, everything's going to be going wrong for the X-Men before you know it. Boy, talk about one of the legendary story runs. It's in this period with the X-Men. So Magneto blasts her more or less out of the sky um, before Wolverine can stop him. Nightcrawler teleports more or less saves her from getting, um, or tries to, anyways, save her. Oh, yeah, because I think her, um, yeah, because of the force fields of her suit. So Rogue takes off, manages to catch her, gets her down to the ground, and um, Wolverine vouches for her, so the X-Men are now okay with Heather Hudson. I recognize her now. That's Heather Hudson, Alpha Flight's leader. But why the Guardian costume? And why did she attack us? She didn't. I told you. I sensed confusion. She came seeking help. She's new at this game. Didn't understand that the diving at mutants around nightfall ain't the way to get it. You were a member of James McDonald's Hudson's Department H long before you were an X-Men Wolverine. If past loyalties remain to be resolved, then resolve them with our blessing. Come, X-Men. I believe the opera is being simulcast. Oh, so they're going to miss out on the opera. Fraser would be horrified. Meanwhile, a boat cuts along the coast. Our target is within range, translating from the Japanese. I wish I knew what it is we are tracking. Our mistress was vague as to the alterations made by uh, to our instruments by her technicians. You will learn when our target learns, Captain. In the interim, it is best not to anticipate the plans of Lady Deathstrike. And this is the first appearance of this character as Lady Deathstrike. Not the first appearance of the character, but as Lady Deathstrike. Interesting to me that it is in an issue of Alpha Flight rather than X-Men. And this really, in some ways, is more of an X-Men... Whoops. There we go. Is more of an X-Men story than an Alpha Flight story. So Logan goes for a drive with Vindicator. Um, she's like, what hit me? The X-Men. You should learn to phone ahead. I'm such a fool. I should have known they'd take my sudden appearance as an attack. Yep, we're a cautious bunch. But Alpha Flight would have reacted the same way. The fault's not the X-Men's, it's mine. I've got max power now, Logan, and I don't know how to use it. Teach me. So that's what this is all about. Heather couldn't cut it as leader of Alpha Flight without some kind of power, so she got somebody to rebuild Jimmy's super suit, the same suit that killed him. Babe, you're nuts. <laughs> Good old Wolverine. Why did I think you'd be any different from the rest of them? Why did I think you understand? Heather. Leave me alone, Logan. If you won't help me, just leave me alone. I never said I wouldn't help you, beautiful. I just said you were nuts. So join the club. Then you will teach me how to use Max battle suit to be a fighter, to lead Alpha Fight. Far as the suit goes, seems you're already doing okay. As for the rest, well, I swore I'd help you anywhere, anytime, with no questions asked, just like you helped me. And now we're going to get a little bit of Wolverine history. We're going to see when Heather and Mac first met Logan. And you can see Logan's doing a bit of a Tarzan act out in the wilds of Canada, wearing a loincloth. He attacks 
uh, the two of them who are on their little snowshoes. And um, and she manages to use a gun to shoot him right in the back. It is a man, Heather, but you did the right thing. He would have killed me if you hadn't. Good Lord, he's still alive. No, he can't be. But he'll die of exposure out here on the slopes unless we get him out of get him to the cabin. Then I'll radio Ottawa. What a find. Mac, we came here to get away from Department H in your work. This is our honeymoon. I know that, my darling. And yet we can't just leave our wild men now. So they bring him back to the cabin. Of course, they don't know about the healing factor. And he leaves Heather alone with him, strapped down on the bed, but still, it's Wolverine we're talking about. And so she does her best to take care of him, um, even though she was a bit afraid. And then, Stick pops the claws, middle of a blizzard, in this cabin, all alone with Wolverine. I must have dozed off. Oh, so you're awake. How long? Listen to me. Expecting an answer from a feral freak found wandering the wilderness in a loincloth. Don't stare at me like that. It's not my fault you're here. If you hadn't leapt out of the snows, I'd be in my husband's arms right now. But the one thing he loves even more than his brand new bride is a mystery to sink his scientific teeth into. Wow, he's like Freddy from the Scooby-Doo gang. So he's gone and I'm stuck here playing zookeeper to, to what the devil are you? Boom. Snick. Your shock wasn't nothing compared to mine. You see, it was my first glimpse of my invisible back scratchers, too. So we learn that the first time Wolverine ever popped his claws, although they probably might, they may have retconned it at some point, but the very first time was in the presence of Heather Hudson. Whoa, at last, the second spectacular G.I. Joe yearbook. I wish I'd collected those back in the day. They got that omnibus out now. Holy moly, is it expensive. And it is tempting. And so he's not only surprised, it also hurts. And she kind of comforts him. And he says, you held me like that all through the long night when you were supposed to be holding Jimmy. By the time Jimmy got back, you pulled me through. You told me you'd been wounded before, Logan. Sure, in the war, with the Devil's Brigade. And later when I was, sorry, when I went freelance, I always healed fast. Thought it was some gift I had. Didn't learn for a while that I was a mutant. But nobody would ever hurt me like whoever it was that turned me inside out, laced my bones with unbreakable adamantium, and had the cute idea of giving me claws for letting me loose. If they let me loose. It's all a blank. To this day, I don't know who changed me or why or how I got away. But I did, and you and Jimmy found me, offered me a home, adopted me. Mac worked with you day and night until you'd conquer the pain-wracked, bloodlusting beast inside you and become a man. I've already told you, babe, it wasn't Jimmy. It was you. From that night in the cabin till the day I finally got it through my adamantium reinforced skull, that you re that you really married that you were really I'm sorry that you really married to him and weren't gonna leave him for no one, especially not me. You left Department H because you couldn't have me. Isn't it funny when you get all the X Men stuff in you know cartoons movies? You don't get Alpha Flight, and really Alpha Flight is pretty important to the history of the Wolverine character in the actual Marvel Universe. Jimmy was like a brother to me. Well, you treated me like the kid you two never had had. Only I was too big to dangle on your knee rather than cause a scene. I split. Joined the Canadian Secret Service, then the X-Men. I was trying to put some distance between us, but I swore that if you ever needed me, I'd be there to protect you. Protect I don't want your protection or Max or my father's or Alpha Flight's. Somebody's always been seeing after helpless little Heather all her life. 
and she's sick of it. I'm supposed to be the leader of Alpha Flight, blast it, and I've got the power to protect myself now. All I'm asking is for someone to please teach me how to use it. They say that heroes are born, not made, babe. That's, that's bull. I'm living proof. Being a hero is more than having some sort of power. Look at Storm. Look at Captain America. They either never had powers or they lost them. What keeps them going is guts. Without guts, all the power and training in the world don't mean spit. Power I had, mutant power, and super strong skeleton. Training I got from the Secret Service. Guess I never lacked guts either. You got more guts than a trick Dex got jokers, babe. You proved that when you went from being a crummy, sec- uh, crummy secretary to leader of Alpha Flight. And since you picked up power along the way, the question now is, do I train you? Nice pickle you're putting me in. You saved my life and years later asked me to repay the debt by helping you risk yours. I refuse. Oh, hold on. I refuse, you hate me. I lose. I agree, you get yourself killed, I lose. Both would give me some rough nights. Not as rough as me, Logan. Help me, make me a hero. Not much choice now, anyway, unless you feel like running. I smell a bunch of trouble on the way. You're about to get on-the-job training. So let's do it, babe. Wolverine son, you battle with misappropriated power. That which was stolen must now be returned. Whoa, what a way to end. Next issue, honor. So, Vindicator is going to get to go toe to toe with ninjas, samurais, Lady Deathstrike, Wolverine by her side. We're getting into it. We're getting into it. All right, folks. Alpha Flight number 33, guest starring for a moment the X Men, but primarily Wolverine, and we get to learn a little bit more about Wolverine's secret history, which at that time was still largely a mystery. One of the great bits of of Marvel lore is the way they slowly revealed the history of Wolverine. I think it's what made him such a rich and popular character. It's one of the things it did. I mean, also the claws and the fact that he was, you know, shredding people up at a time when comic book tastes were starting to move towards shredding people up rather than, uh, you know, covering them in webs. Um, but it, it's kind of cool the way that you just slowly get to learn Wolverine's origins and it doesn't feel like a series of retcons. Oh, here's the origin of Wolverine. Well, not really. It's actually this. Well, it actually turned. No, it was a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here. And it does link up and it does make sense. So once again, we get a crossover Alpha Flight and the X Men, Vindicator and Wolverine, and they're going up against Lady Deathstrike. And we'll see that next Monday. In Alpha Flight number 34. Until then, what do you think of this issue, folks? Leave your comments, please. I'd love to read them. I'd love to see what you're thinking, what you're saying. I'll try to get back to you when I can on those comments because I like having the conversation. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Maybe think of subscribing, sharing with a friend. Until next time, God bless everybody. Please be kind to one another. Have a little bit of fun, and I will see you again soon hopefully, in Dad's Den of Pop Culture. Bye-bye.